Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Namaste Center in Hendersonville, North Carolina. It is November, October 7th, 2012, and we are blessed today with a wonderful guest who has just uh, one of the biggest toolboxes and uh, teaching forums that I've seen in a long time. So I'm looking forward to having Kimberly share a little bit, of, or maybe a lot, of what you do. So let me just give you a little bit of a background on Kim. Uh, she says here on her website, uh, who, who I am, who I am. And uh, Kimberly Crow is a healing facilitator of soul as guided by spirit through the creator of all there is. Her life work is devoted to the healing arts. She's been a healer for 28 years in allopathic and holistic medicine and studied a wide range of healing modalities she combines with knowledge of her natural connection to Creator to hold the space of self-empowerment with her clients and students. She sees the divine essence in all, which is fantastic. She also has an office in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, she offers alternative healing services such as therapeutic massage, hypnotherapy, homeopathy, energy work, and uh, many other things. Also, uh, she does, she's an artist. So there's many things we're gonna touch base on today, but before we get there, I'd like to just welcome you and thanks for being here today, thank Kimberly. Thank you so much, Charlotte, for yes. all the work that you do. Well, thank you very much. We're all blessed to have you. <laughs> we're blessed to have you here too, so thank you. We're so blessed here. And I just wanna begin 28 years, you don't look much older than that. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All illusion. Yeah, that's right, exactly. So we'll just leave it at that. And uh, so when you got started in all this, how did this all, has this been who you are all your life, or have you known this? It no, I didn't know that this was who I was. Yeah. I'm still finding that out. I think we find out who we're not mm -hmm. to know who we are. Very good. Um, how, I just, you know, I came from Kentucky, a really small town, and lived a regular middle life class, you know, little simple life. And um, I was in med tech. I worked in hospitals in their laboratories. So really, when I look back at it, I was doing alchemy for a long time. And I just didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that that's what it was. And um, there was a, a few events that happened in my life, the ones that, you know, shake your little world. And on my 33rd birthday, which I didn't know then was a magic number, um, my then um, husband, I had a two-year-old at that time, and I had been married since I was 19. But anyway, I had a two-year-old in Kentucky. Right? Yeah, yeah. Very early we think there. that we're supposed to yeah. get married and have a little, you know, the white picket and yeah. all that stuff, the house mm -hmm. and all that. And um, my husband just didn't come home. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know where he was or any of that stuff. And all of that, it's like all of a sudden when your whole world, everything goes out from under your feet and you think of what everything was supposed to be and all of the stuff that we've been programmed with and our belief system and how life is supposed to be was gone. And it was like there was, I didn't have a foundation to stand on because I hadn't experienced struggle in my life. And it had always been pretty simple. And um, somebody gave me the book, The Road Less Traveled, and the, like, the first line in his book says that life's a struggle. And it, strangely enough, that helped me at that time because I was like, I didn't know that. But I don't believe that anymore. But at the time, that actually helped me yeah. to go, oh, it is. <laughs> and so from that tailspin and stuff, that was like probably the first uh, uh, loss of mind, <laughs> you know, it's like where you're literally on the floor and you're, you know, going, God, please take me, and then I realized that I did. It was like God did take me, you know, it was like I stepped into a whole different place when everything, all the structures that you have in your mind collapse, and it's like in the long run, it was a gift, and um after the journey, looking back, there were times that now we know that were cosmic times in it, you know, in our calendar, that things happened to me, and I didn't know it then. You know, and you, it's easier to look back and see those mm -hmm. moments. And so, anyway, um, the first, my first thought was, oh my God, I'm going to have to work in this lab the rest of my life. 
I'm 33 and you don't get to retire till you're 65. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, you know, because I had this thing that, you know, somewhere you have this and you get to retire and, you know, I'm going to have babies and my husband's going to take care of me. And, and it wasn't there anymore. It was all gone. So, but then I realized I didn't have anybody in my life tell me what I could do or not do. I could do anything I wanted to yeah. do. And it was like, so I went in one of those spins of that. And now, I mean, I realize now it was a calling. I, ha I would wake up with this overwhelming thing to go be a massage therapist. I didn't even know what a massage therapist did. I mean, when I told my, if, well, I had enough sense not to tell anybody. And so uh, um, things started happening at work. And it was like one thing after another. I mean, I got put on probation for like stupid things <laughs> and it was like, and I, and I had another breakdown during that and I was like everything was spinning out and so anyway I, um, I showed dogs at that time which is another whole crazy world in of itself and I had won the national specialty so I had a, a like an overnight huge success in the dog arena and um, so not only did I have a two-year-old, but I had a kennel with 12 dogs and just me and taking care of everything and working full time. So um, I had never bred my dogs to make money. And I looked out there and I thought, how do I make this change in my life? How do I step away from a job with benefits and you know, you know something's really wrong when you're working another day because you get another vacation day off. It's like there's something wrong with that picture when you're putting more time in to have more days off. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, I was at work and somebody was talking about retirement and I just had that overwhelming, I cannot do this, I will die, I cannot do this, I have to do something different. And so the, the voice was going, go be a massage therapist, go be a massage therapist. So I uh, bred every dog I had <laughs> that came in heat. They come in the heat all at the same time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so it was like I had 33 puppies on the ground that summer in different stages. And by then, Kelsey was three, I guess. And it was the best summer of my life. I quit work. I played with golden, golden retrievers every day and a three-year-old. I went to massage school. I quit everything. I just went, that's it. I can't do this anymore. And um, that's what I did. And in that time period, all of these things started happening to me. And when I went to massage school, when I touched people, I heard their, I heard their body. I could hear these stories. And I felt the energy, and my hands would take off and do this stuff. I thought that happened to every massage therapist, because <laughs> it's all that I knew. And so um, after I worked for about nine months doing that, and I went back to take some advanced classes, and I was talking about these experiences and these hands going into my hands and these things that would happen, and they, everybody just looked at me like I came from some other planet. <laughs> and it wasn't happening to everybody else. And I didn't know it didn't happen to everybody else. So um, about the time a friend, a massage therapist friend traded with me, and I was showing her what was going on with me. And she said, oh, you need to go to these groups. They, they, they teach this stuff. You know, you need to go. And so I trucked off to Nashville, Tennessee to Heal and Touch. So I did that program. And when I got there, I said, oh, my God, there's other people that know these things. <laughs> there's books wrote all about this. And um, I realized that my daughter saw energy. Because she, when she would talk to me, she would be looking around me. And, um, of course, the child had lived out in the country. We had one television station. And uh, I actually had a party line on the phone still at that point. <laughs> and, and it was, and Kelsey asked me one day not too long ago, what was that thing you used to walk around with that had this big, long cord? <laughs> and it's like children her age don't know what a corded phone is. It's yeah. kind of amazing how technology has changed as fast as it has. But anyway, um, from that, I started studying everything I could get my hands on. And so I came home and I asked her, did she ever see lots and colors around people? And she said, Mommy, it's not around them, it takes their shape. 
and then she starts telling me all of this stuff about all of these things. And, and so I thought, I have to study everything I can get my hands on because I have this child that's going to you know, have these questions and I have to answer them. Well, she didn't have any questions because it was what life was for her. So it was, you know, another one of those things, the universe taking you on the journey. And so that's how it all started unfolding. And then I studied everything in the world out there. And um, one of my Heal and Touch friends said to me one day, because I was doing all this stuff out in people's field, and she said, you can be the puppet forever, Kim. And, you know, there's something happening with you that's not happening with everybody. And... All you have to do is ask to be conscious. And she said, and when you step into that space and ask to be the conscious healer, you will be. And I started asking questions. I, I would ask the universe, what is this that's going on? What are these things that are in this person's field that I can't find in other books and stuff? And I heard the answers. And that was when um, it, it was these matrices that we are connected to that are out there and it's in mass consciousness and in human consciousness and um, I realized that all of these things I was finding in the field were these structures that went to this and so that was so from 97 till now that's still been developing and developing and developing and I had experienced your um, your buddy, Greg Braden, uh, <laughs> when I was, I was writing myself this book about all of this, and that was about the time I was getting the information about distorted matrices and how they're a part of our consciousness, and I'd been writing and writing for, it was like the month of December, and I was in this whole thing of this. And you know, you lose days and times and stuff when you're doing that in that writing flow. And I got this to go to Barnes & Noble that day. I had to go to Barnes & Noble. And I go, and I, that was just when spirit that, that works with me had told me to call it matrices and to change the wording on some of the stuff. And I thought, I don't even know what that means. And I walked in Barnes and Noble, and on the shelf was his book, The Divine Matrix, and that was the words wow. they were using with me. And I was like, oh, Somebody else, I mean, I went, I walked in and my solar plex took me straight to the bookshelf where it was at. And I pulled it off and I was like, somebody else knows this. <laughs> and um, when I opened up the book, it was December and the copyright on his book wasn't until like the end of January or February the next year. And I had one of those moments where it was like, what did I just do and where am I and how did I get here? You know, and I literally asked somebody beside me what date it was because I thought I had went through some kind of time war <laughs> and that I had stepped into, you know, into the future. I was still not sure about what happened that day Wow! because the book was there on the shelf and the copyright was later and it was already there in my hand. That's interesting. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you're the, his other book, Walking Between the Worlds. Yeah. It no. sounds like you do a bit of that as Actually, well. Actually, you know, you talk to him yeah. for me. I went home and wrote a letter right then to his organization that I needed to speak to him then, and they <laughs> sent me a letter back to tell Tommy he was a busy man. <laughs> I still haven't got to have that conversation with well, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so did you coin that... Uh, phrase inner awakening matrix it came I from, am it, it I came that. from whatever because when I was doing the work and I was showing it to my heel and touch buddies I was calling it the sphere work because everything was in spheres and orbs and around people and then it would have these strings and attachments to them and I kept calling it balloons and the sphere work and and so one day in my writing because that's how I get information for myself it's like conversations with God. I mm -hmm. ask mm -hmm. questions and then I write the answers and then it comes in that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I woke up and then it was, I remember being, it was like in the middle of the night or something and I heard this voice telling me to change the name, that, that they had a name for the work and to call it the Inner Awakening Matrix. And when I wrote that down, it was like off the pages, I saw the I and the A and the M come up from it. Wow. 
And mm -hmm. so that was where that came from. So that part of that basically is as we um, disengage from those matrices that have got distorted, then we go into our true inner self, our authentic self, and and when you go into that place of that, that is that pristine I am energy that's not been corrupted. And so how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> you have to come to the workshop and figure it out. You know, you well, already I'm, know. I'm asking everybody you already knows. The group. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> already knows how to do this. It's just we don't remember that we know. And if we have time, I'm going to do a, I'll do a meditation with everybody to do part of this what they, I call the soul recalibration point. Well, so we'll do that on the meditation. We'll do that on the how you didn't do one, did you? No, I didn't. Well, <laughs> we'll I do that. Aurora was enough, so there you yeah, go. But we'll now do, we're we'll do that part. We're going to do that later, uh, and that's well, so. Right now, I've been traveling and teaching. I just did a class yesterday up in Johnson City, Tennessee. So, um, well, we're really I have to hand it to as many people yeah. as I can. And I had another. I mean, I had an experience. I've had a couple of death doors that. I could have went through, and I was at the point to do that, and and didn't because I hadn't finished what I came to do this time. And um, we have those choices all the time, actually. And we, you know, we kind of settled for free will when we created this planet and said, "We'll take free will," because now we're moving back <coughs> into divine will. That's what the ascension is. And when we um, step into that. It, it flows. Mm -hmm. and, um, one of the matrices, the distorted matrices that I've really been aware of since I've been in this area <laughs> is um, it's one to um, surrender and sacrifice. And that um, it's, a, it's a part of a lot of human consciousness in the individuals that I've worked with in this area, that there's this part of stepping into that surrender and in surrender into the divine will, they're going into sacrifice, and that's not the divine. It was never set up that way to do that, and that's got enmeshed. It's like they married each other, and yes. they're creating not so divine. <laughs> right, exactly. I agree with you. So that's, that's one of the huge ones that I've seen um, in this area. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm sure it's in other places, but the gift of being here was that it's been brought to my attention. So <laughs> that one exists. So, um, so in the work that I've been doing, like, that's one of the things in the group stuff. I'm teaching this individually, but also in, uh, I can hold space to do a whole container, you know, off groups of people. And um, so the more people that can unravel from this, then they can carry that consciousness out to everybody else. Because this whole, we're moving from being spiritual warriors. We're not spiritual warriors anymore. It's time to lay that down. And it's like we're moving into being the light bringers. And we mm -hmm. bring it wherever we go. So do you feel like that's the whole, uh 2012 uh, idea that that's the transformation is really stepping in and remembering who we are. Who we are. Absolutely. The authentic, the authentic part of who we really are. Mm -hmm. So somebody. The spirit within us. Right. Yeah. And somebody comes to you for a healing, so you've got a variety of things. So you just intuitively know what what may work for that person. Is that how you work? Yeah, what I do is, my, I do hands-on table work too, but I can do that distantly. They don't have to be in front of me. Um, I just take someone's hand, and if it's on the phone or whatever, I command a reading and healing for that person. And um, so I just go in my heart and connect and go to what I call creator. And... Um, I can, as a creator of all that there is, I command a reading and healing for this person and what's <coughs> most relevant for their soul at this time. And so I take my awareness into their awareness and drop into their energy and start scanning. So I see, med I see, I see body parts and stuff sometimes too. Um, <coughs> I see all of that. And then the emotions and the untruths that we believe about ourselves that keep us in that pattern. 
so it's those little stories that were fed to us and we held on to. Mm -hmm. The amygdala is the part of the brain that holds the traumas, and so we hold that believing that it's going to protect us. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up, everything has to filter through that. And that creates these little balloons, you know, like the comic strip balloons that you see on their heads <laughs> when they're talking to themselves. So all these little scenarios are floating around us. So consciousness that's out there that's coming in has to go through that. And then so it's going to filter through you differently when those energies are out there. So when you see that, you're doing a healing, so you see these things, what, how do you, what do you do? Make them cry. <laughs> 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 and then I know they're feeling. Really <laughs> 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 Usually I'll, I'll say who said this to you, or you know, it'll come that way. Like I'm seeing this, and and uh, how old were you the first time this was said to you, or you know, or I'm hearing this say just different for different people, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so I start telling them what it is that I'm seeing and my brain is actually there actually is a thing on my head to see. <laughs> like when we we're in beta that's when we're talking and so um, that's a like higher frequency but when you go into theta that's when actually where healing occurs and that's where we're at when you know we're in in the dream part of consciousness. And um, where we get a lot of information, it's where we're at in prayer. And my brain can hold both waves at the same time. So when I talk, I, I'm an open channel. And it's like it can come in that way. It does, because some people, their brain, the way their neural paths are set up, you look and then you do the reading. You know, you, have, you can't do both at the same time. That is awesome. For some reason, I can't. And actually, my, my brain goes into gamma, which is really faster and it's a really fast thing and when I'm really channeling it's like it's in that way. Wow. So for whatever reason my neural receptors are set up that way. Yeah, so maybe it was all the drugs in the 70s. <laughs> 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 My whole life, I've always done some kind of artwork, and then uh, I actually stopped doing it when I was showing dogs and stuff because my art was weird, and nobody that in my family they all thought it was strange. My whole life, this weird stuff that I painted, and um, so somewhere in there, I decided I'm going to start painting again. And I asked everybody on Christmas for that's what I wanted. That's the only thing I wanted. Nobody gave it to me. Santa Claus did not show up for me. So I had to go do that for myself and bring that back. And my daughter on that, that uh, for Mother's Day, I think, Mother's Day or my birthday, one, I can't remember, she found this huge garbage bag of all of this artwork that I did in high school. She found it in my mom's house. And she had it behind her back, and she was like, I've got a special present for you. And she brought it out, and it was this garbage bag full of all of this artwork that I did in high school. And it was just like, it was like she gave me my creativity back. Wow. So you two are definitely, does she, does she do the healing work now too? No, she's a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> with some friends for the weekend. But um, <laughs> what else do you do when you're a kid and your mom's open to everything? You have to rebel some way. <laughs> so, I'm not touching that. <laughs> She'll come yeah. back to it. Yeah. <laughs> She's not going to be able to. I don't know. And maybe she, I'll let that go too. Yeah. It's like whatever her journey is. Well, maybe she's to bring light to the Republican Party. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually yesterday she, does, she yeah. told me she's voting for Roseanne Barr. So, oh, okay. so see, she's already awakened. <laughs> <laughs> that is just very cool. That is fantastic. Oh, gosh. Well, you 
are, you are amazing. You've got oh, all so these. So the artwork was yeah. starting oh, to happen. Yeah. I was painting, and I would see faces in the art. And I'd get up the next morning, and there were faces I didn't put there. And I would be like, where did this come from? What is going on here? And I went to, uh, I was doing readings, but not doing paintings and readings together. And I went to a place in um, Indiana. It's called Cap Chesterfield. That's a spiritualist camp. Susan B. Anthony actually had a home there and stuff. So it's like she was that, you know, secret uh, spiritualist all that time. And uh, I went to a lady there that did spirit art to show her this. It was, it was like, what is going on? And this is even crazy for me. <laughs> and uh, she told me it's some lost phenomenon, and I forgot the name of it. It's kind of like when the trumpets used to, you know, fly through the air and stuff. It's one of those things that they thought was lost. And she was all excited to see that this was coming, you know, through people. And so if I, what I... I paint, I paint and do one that way in acrylics, but then also, um, like if I'm at some of these little festivals, I do um, pastels and um, pencils, and I just take their hand and ask their soul to show what's most relevant, and I put pastels on there, and then the faces just start showing up, and then I sketch them, and I read as I'm doing it. It's so fun. It's like Aurora's music. I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> well, there's no mistake that Aurora just happened to be on the schedule. No! I know! <laughs> right. And it's probably no mistake who's here today either. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there's so many things we could continue to, to go on and on about. Well, you want that meditation, don't Yeah, you? I want the meditation. But I want to, does anyone have a, a question for Kimberly? Just a comment. I've experienced her, uh, her work several times, and it really truly is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks. you, Sandy. Great. Great spirit. I yes. wish I had a question. I knew a question to ask. <laughs> you already know all the answers. <laughs> well, I've spoken like a good coach. <laughs> that's true. And that's, you know, when people ask me what I, I mean, I, when I do readings on people, all I'm doing is, it's like you forgot your glasses and I'm reading your paper for you. Because it's all within you. I don't know anything. You know, I'm your. It's your energy's telling it to me. Yeah. Well, do you have? Are you psychic in the sense? Do you or do you see any visions for our future? Nah. I, I mean, we're creating it. I mean, you're not going to put me in that spot. Uh, we're creating that as we go, and I don't know if it's totally written yet. I mean, and I don't think it's going to be the same for everybody. Um, and the more, you know, all we can do is be an air center of our own neutrality and out of the chaos and the duality. And when each person steps into that their self, and then you can carry that out to others, um, I mean, that's, that's the tip in the consciousness. Uh, something I just realized this week, because we can um, get kind of, I don't know, with New Age or whatever you want to call us, whatever label that is in our New Thought thinking, and, you know, you can say to people, well, you're creating your own reality, and um, you are, but you're being created until you realize you're creating your own reality. Mm -hmm. And I just saw that, and it's like... Say that again, Kim. That we are creating our own reality, but you are being created until you realize, till you wake mm -hmm. up that you're creating it. It's like mm -hmm. the matrices, the DNA, all of those beliefs within us are creating us until we consciously like choose to step into that. I need to think about that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. pretty yeah. amazing, though. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have one question. Claim your powers. When you say, when you say I read somebody's hand or whatever, do you mean you combine astrology with your psychic awareness? No. Sometimes astrology comes through, but uh, sometimes things come through that I don't know anything about because the person does. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. if it's a... Uh, if it's aromatherapy or herbs or something like that, I've never considered myself a herbalist because I had too many friends that were, and so I could tell, you know, recommend them to people. But if the person's consciousness knows the vibration, I may uh, get information like that for them, and it's usually like affirmation of whatever it is that they're doing for themselves, or maybe they'll say, oh, you know, I was taking that, and I... 
I haven't for the last month. So, you know, I'll, it, it's, I think it's, it's the response to their body. My father was an um, anatomy and physiology teacher, and I grew up grading papers. I thought it was fun to use the red pencil on stuff. And so I did that as long, I mean, as soon as I could mark a thing and look at the, you know, answer sheet. And he, all his tests were, uh, essay and fill in the blank. He didn't believe it. Guessing games that you know anatomy or you don't. And so after all of this played out in my life, it's those events that you realize that all that was being there for me to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then working in the lab too gave me a language that I didn't know I had. You know, and it's like, because I understand that's where the allopathic background comes in to understand what's actually going on. And so, like, I, I can smell bacteria because I worked with them for so many years. I know what they all smell like. Oh, wow. It's not always to the way. It's it not be good sometimes. <laughs> I don't know how to comment to that. Oh, wow. so, it, so there's things, there's parts of this that we don't even realize that we have this whole divine plan the whole time. You know? I look back on it and it's like, oh, wow. Isn't that amazing, though? Yeah, so when you asked me, did I... Was I always this way? Do you, you know? And then it's like, well, yeah, you are. And then until you, you don't know it until you realize that it was always there for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I used to speak in tongues and remove warts from my cousins when they were little. <laughs> and I thought I was just messing with their heads. And then later it was like, oh my God, the tongues were like doing some kind of oh spell gosh. that I didn't know it. That's <laughs> Should we have a question there? Yeah. So, am I hearing or this or am I not? Um, so, at the deepest level, um, could it be said that there really isn't free will? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, we we chose to have free will, so we're in the choice of that. But it's like when we step into divine will then that's when we surrender and we're in the flow because it's like with free will there's always choice and there's no right or wrong with your choice there's just different outcomes right but if you recognize that everything has been put in place for you just like you were saying with uh, your um, t speaking in tongues. The, all of these things, the puzzle pieces, when you get to a certain point, fall into place and you see that <clears throat> on one level, yes, you may have chosen, but on, the, on another level, it was there. And I, it's different waves of consciousness. So it's kind of like a rainbow, you know, and it's, a, it's waves. And it's like, so we, we're... Our mental feel and emotional feel, it's like there's templates between those, and so there's different waves of consciousness, and this whole consciousness that we're in now, the way humanity was set up for this present time, consciousness has came through our mind. It's like all of this is out here, and there's a huge funnel on top of our head, and it comes through, and we take it, and we go through our body, and then we see what scenario we're going to play. And that's where consciousness, that was the that was the divine design of it for whatever this experiment has been. And we're developing the undeveloped potential. And that's why we chose the DNA that we chose. Not because of our family's personalities or this or that. We chose it to develop the undeveloped potential. And that human aspect of us only came to earth to be earth, to be part of that, that spirit consciousness came to the human aspect to be love. To receive love, to give love, that's the only thing humans here for. And so, and, and when that braids in with soul consciousness, which soul really is what carries the karmic stuff. It's not human, it's soul, because it's a memory bank. And it's a memory bank of that whole entire, uh, everything that's ever happened here on this planet. And um, it carries that memory bank. I'm actually kind of seeing soul a little bit different than what uh, my perception was before because as we move into the world soul, 
we're not an individual soul. And it's like, and that's when karma is, collapses. And there is no cause and effect anymore because you're moving into the divine plan. And it's like, kind of in free will, that's where the karma still exists. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and then we'll move into that part. But, and you have choices to do that or not. You know, which field you choose to play in, where you want to move into. So it's waves of consciousness is how I would explain that. Does that make sense? Did that answer you? Yeah. Kind of? Yes, that was <laughs> a wonderful smile. answer. And I've been feeling that exact same thing, actually. Yes. Yeah. That's all a, yeah. Yeah. I know we have a, a couple questions. Do you want to? <coughs> you were saying when you got in this area, what you were sensing in this area, and of course I've dropped out the first word, but the last word was sacrifice. Can Surrender. you speak? Surrender. Surrender. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Uh, I just, uh, the, what I call the matrices, and then there's the ones that are distorted, and so it's part of, it's like it beams into our consciousness. So in that wave of that band of consciousness, there's this energy that's out there. They're almost like little energy satellites. I don't know really where they come from and where they were made. I don't know that I want to know that part. And it like kind of beams into us. So if we have the vibration that resonates with that, it pulls that energy to us and into our thought. And um, this area seems to have a lot of that if surrendering Surrender is to sacrifice. If I surrender, then I sacrifice. Maybe it's all the wars that happen here. Yeah, you that's know, what, that's what it's I'm like thinking. so. It, there's a lot of that ingrained in the consciousness. And I mean, this area is a huge melting pot. It's not like everybody's DNA was conceived here. It's like so, but it seems to be there. It the seems memory. to be here a lot in the memory. <laughs> and, and I kind of see that now like a big, huge dump truck. And it's like um, Earth seems to be the emotional dumping ground. And it's like it kind of like the energy comes and it dumps out into, into that band of consciousness.